All right. So, Salicacy. This is one of the members of the Salicacy. It's Grey Willow, um, Salix Scenaria. It is an invasive European willow. Uh, I'm going to highlight a couple of things about it. We've got this um, catkin that is beginning to expand. We will see some more advanced catkins. The flowers are called catkins. They are basically these petalless, fluffy um, wads of flowers. This is a female catkin, and you can tell because it's not only not producing pollen, but it has these wide ovaries that are very apparent with these kind of disc-like pollen receptor surfaces, which are the um, styles. Um, these are dioecious plants, so we have separate male and female plants. Um, Salicaceae grow very rapidly. This plant looks like it was cut down last year or the year before, and it's already about six feet above the ground again, sending up numerous stalks. You can tell this is gray willow um, because there is a distinct flutedness to the bark where if you run your hands over the bark, it feels like there are veins under the bark. And we're going to go to a plant that has it even more evident because the bigger the plant gets, the more apparent that becomes. All right. So this is a much larger, much older male gray willow. Wait, is this one male? Yeah. Um, this guy has had some damage by deer. Um, deer like to rub on trees to get the um, fluff off of their antlers. Um, and what we can do is take a piece off of the wood and peel it, peel the bark away, to see the... Um, fluting under the bark, but if you look closely here, you can see that fluting very distinctly. This is one of the telltale characteristics of it being gray willow. The bark can be quite variable. As you can see down at the bottom, the bark has a different pattern to it. There are native willows that have kind of a diamondy pattern to the bark, but it's um, a lot different in appearance. If you saw it, the um, native willows have very raised kind of shreds of bark rather than just shallow fissures like that. Um, we've got this very nice fluting. It's almost veiny underneath the bark. Um, so this particular plant is also female. Um, we have a male there and a female here. You can see the um, seed pods starting to form on her. Um, the males are what we like because bees adore the pollen of them. Now this plant is past its prime. You can see that there are numerous shed catkins that are what we call spent. They're no longer usable for producing gametes and the uh, pollen that the plants would use to reproduce. But you can see this old shed catkin. This, These are all the anthers that used to produce pollen. You can see they're still like an orangey or yellowy color. Lots of pollen is produced by these. Very good early season resource for pollinators. Good for beekeepers and also really good for people who um, want native bees to come around. Even though this is an invasive plant, it does have a lot of value for its pollen because it produces more pollen than our native willows. So you have kind of a um, dilemma. Do you want to have a plant that is invasive, not native, can cause problems, but also has a lot of good to it. And perhaps, you know, as we lose more and more biodiversity, it's okay to have something that is um, not originally native. It's kind of a debate that's gonna rage on. This is Curly Willow. I guess it's named because of the funky way that these um, branches grow. As you can kind of see, it's growth habit. Really interesting. Really great ornamental value. The stems are fairly flexible. Willows are used for a number of different things. You can make all sorts of crafts and even structures with these. Um, I don't know what this thing growing alongside it is. <laughs> you can um, weave baskets. You can make all kinds of fencing and poles and natural walls and things. Willows are useful for a lot of different purposes. This is one that is grown primarily for ornamental value. 
Um, this is a non-native, it's a cultivar of a, um, basically the typical weeping willow, although real weeping willow is a hybrid. We're not going to worry too much about that. These are male plants. I, uh, we see the catkins on this male have just started to open. Um, you can see the, uh, let's see, can you really tell yet? couple of things when you're doing dealing with willows um of course bark characteristics and flowering characteristics are important so remember the gray willow is precocious those catkins were out before the leaves but this guy is serotonous its leaves have clearly emerged before or simultaneously with the catkins the features of the catkins themselves are also useful in identification, as well as the features of the leaves. And we're going to see a couple of other willows that have different leaf features. Take note of the fact that these leaves are very smooth at the edges. Now, with willows, you have to consider a couple of different things. The first being, are these the very first leaves the plant puts out, or are they leaves that the plant puts out later in the season? As some willows have identical early leaves and different late leaves, or a combination of early and late leaf characteristics are what is necessary to narrow down to a single species. Um, Willow has about 400 species, the genus Salix. Um, there are about 30 in New England, although only about half of those are native. Um, of the 11 or 12 species in Rhode Island, I think six or seven are native. Um, I can do a tally of them later. But the edges of the leaves are very important, um, as well as the age of the leaves. Oftentimes you want to wait until the leaf is at its full size before you use it to identify out the plant. These are almost certainly not at their full size. Um, but because this was artificially planted by somebody who knew what it was, we know what it is. All right, so here is some of my production of willows, salicaceae. These are gray willows. Um, gray willows have not particularly distinct leaves among willows. They have these kind of um, revolute edges to the leaves where they can, or they're undulating. Um, they have these little hairs on the back so you can kind of see that. They have very complicated venation. They're fairly wide. Um, these are all gray willows that I'm propagating so people can plant them to have a pollen source for bees and other insects that need an early season source of pollen. Now, not the only willows I'm producing. I've got the curly willow that I'm propagating out. Most willows propagate very easily from stem cuttings. This is what all these guys started out as. And they grow very rapidly. We have dwarf prairie willow. This is Salix occidentalis. Um, it is a native willow species, which is good. We have a lot of females in this group, but they're producing seed pods here, as you can see. Um, and the goal is to collect the seeds from these when they're mature and grow them out, which should hopefully give us more males. Because when you clone them like this, you're asexually propagating them. So whatever sex this plant is, when it was outside, it's going to be here once I've taken the cutting. However, if you recombine the DNA by fertilizing the seeds inside of the pods, you are going to increase the odds you'll get males. Now, willows tend to be female heavy in their populations. We're not going to talk about that too much just because that's a side note, but there still will be some males produced by the seed pods. So that should give us more males for our project. We want the males because we want the pollen, because the pollen is what the bees are going to rely on. Now, this plant, it's another gray willow, is putting out catkins and sending out leaves. I generally will cut off the flower buds so that the plant puts more effort into growing roots, but sometimes a flower bud sneaks in there. It's, you know, not an exact science. Um, we have meadow willow, which is another native willow. Um, and the reason I'm really trying to get a lot of native willows is because while the pollinators will use pollen from kind of any of these, other animals, especially moths, butterflies, and things that rely on the foliage, prefer to eat the foliage from native willows. And so we want to have a food source and a habitat source 
for a number of other life forms because in any given area, the more biodiversity you have, the healthier that ecosystem is going to be. So I want to have willows that produce a lot of pollen, willows that produce pollen a little later in the season, which is another motivation to have extra willows around, and willows that are native here so that other things besides the pollinators can use them because the willows only bloom for part of the year and then it's all vegetative growth. Now, um, we also have this unknown willow, which I suspect might be eared willow or goat willow from Great Swamp. And then we have black willow. You can see that the black willow leaves are very sawtoothed and very important. The black willows have these kind of chunks of leaf, if you will, at the petiole base. So you can see that chunk. You can see the leaves are alternately arranged. This is um, this leafy chunk is called a stipule, and the stipules can help determine what kind of willow you're dealing with. Because some willows don't have stipules, some willows only have them on the new leaves, some only have them on the old leaves, and some have them on both new and old leaves. So. A number of different features are used to distinguish the different willow species. As you can imagine, you have a number of possibilities of combinations of these traits. You have some that only produce, you have some that have um, smooth leaf margins. Um, uh, this happens to be gray willow, but um, gray willow is a highly variable species. We could also be dealing with some hybridization in all of this. You never know. But um, the features of the young leaves, the features of the old leaves, the features of the stipules, the features of the bark, the features of the young bark, as well as the catkins are all necessary to make a definitive idea as to what willow you're dealing with because of how variable willows can be within a single species. So you really want to look at all the different things willow so that you can tell what kind of willow you have. Now, another thing I should mention is the... Um, Gray willow, the young wood has very fine hairs, almost like a down over it. It's kind of fuzzy if you feel it. It's hard to show with the camera, but that's one way you can tell that you're dealing with gray willow, as well as that, you know, fluted, veiny bark that's very evident here. 